Hello pandas, I want to talk about zinc. Why? Because it's weird. I keep running into it. Or at least I think I do. And as a scrapper, I've wondered what to do with it. It's great for melting and casting, and it does have scrap value if you want to recycle it, but you need to know what it is and if you actually have some before you can do either. So today, we're identifying zinc versus aluminum. I've got a couple methods to identify this stuff that we'll compare and hopefully figure out the fastest and easiest way to do that. But first, we need to go over what it is and where to find it. Most importantly, it's pretty unlikely you'll find pure zinc, other than as a battery casing or a sacrificial anode in a boat or a hot water heater. It's highly reactive, so it will oxidize instead of other immersed parts near it rusting out. I don't know why that works. What you will find all the time is die cast or pot metal, and if you didn't know what to look for, you might just toss it into your cast aluminum pile, because it looks similar to aluminum, it's used in similar applications, it's non-magnetic, and it doesn't spark with a grinder. And quite honestly, a lot of scrappers do just sell it as cast aluminum, and they're not really losing any money, because the price for scrap zinc is about the same. But it's not the same. Die cast is an alloy of zinc with aluminum, sometimes called Zamic, which is a trademark mix of zinc, aluminum, magnesium, and copper, which is used instead of aluminum because it's more durable so it can be thinner and flows into more detailed castings better for decorative or complex shapes. But how can you tell which is which? Well, turns out it's not that complicated. Once you get a feel for it, you can tell that uh, the zinc is heavier than aluminum might be, about two and a half times heavier. It also doesn't look the same. The surface will have a much duller gray-white color than the brighter aluminum, and it tends to have a, a swirly grain texture on the surface. And if you break a piece off, you can see a very distinct crystalline structure inside. All solid metals are crystal structures, but this one really stands out. Those are pretty subjective methods, though. Let's start testing some tests. Our first one will be a melt test. Zinc has a melting point of 419.5 degrees Celsius, which is pretty low compared to aluminum 660.3 degrees. A propane torch gets up to 1995 degrees, so it should be able to melt both. But the zinc will melt a lot easier. Well, that didn't work. Probably not that one. Well, that was fun, but it isn't very practical. Let's move on to chemicals. So here's one way zinc and aluminum behave completely differently. Aluminum will react with alkalines while zinc will react when introduced to acids. So I've collected the more common ones that we're likely to have around the house. On the caustic side, we've got store brand Drano, which is sodium hydroxide, and bleach, which is chlorine. Then for acids, we've got CLR, which is primarily lactic acid, and vinegar, which is acetic acid. We could get sulfuric or muriatic pretty easily, but I don't think it'll be necessary. We'll take these two materials, file off a bit so we can test different surfaces, and find out together how well these solutions work. If the material in question reacts with both, then it's an alloy of zinc and aluminum. Well, that was Drano right off the bat, so we know there's aluminum in here, but now let's try the CLR. No reaction whatsoever. Right over here. Also, no reaction over there. Just for fun, let's do the Drano again. Definitely having a reaction there. Well, based on this, it looks like this piece is actually aluminum. Let's try the vinegar with this. Yeah, I'm not getting anything. I'm gonna do a bit more CLR. No reaction at all. Let's try another piece. All right, round two. Not getting anything. Vinegar? No reaction whatsoever. Drain cleaner. 
I'm not getting any results. It's possible my CLR is dead. So I guess we only really saw two things. Drano will react with aluminum, and uh, CLR is not acidic enough to react with uh, zinc alloy. So Drano will turn the aluminum black. Neat. Now, those were fun, but the most accurate test is the final one, the water displacement density test. And it's really not as complicated as it sounds. The only special tools you'll need are a scale and a plastic syringe. First, we weigh a piece of the material in question. Then we place it in a glass, which has been completely filled with water. Then capture and measure the amount displaced. Divide the mass by the volume, and the result is our density. Obviously, this primitive setup limits our accuracy, but it's close enough to answer the question, especially when the two possible outcomes are so far apart. If it's very close to either expected result, then that's our answer. And if it's somewhere in the middle, then it's an alloy of the two. It could have any number of other materials in it as well, but without an XRF analyzer, this is as close as we're gonna get. So if you, like me, were wondering how to tell this stuff apart, the chemical test and the density test are both pretty easy, but the density test is the clear winner, and it's not that much more difficult. As far as what to do with it, if you're scrapping for money, you gotta make sure your scrapyard will buy it, but it should be worth a little less than clean cast aluminum. But it's actually really useful for sand casting projects at home. Replacement parts and handles are great applications for die cast or ceramic, and its melting point is just under 500 degrees Celsius, so a lot of people just use a stove or like a, a camp stove. Or... You can probably sell it privately as a casting material as well, but if I was the buyer, I wouldn't want to buy it in ingot form. Zinc alloys become weak and degrade over time when small amounts of impurities are introduced, so as the buyer, I'd want to be sure there weren't trace amounts of lead or rust that had snuck into the melt. Maybe we'll experiment with this stuff here. But that's all the information I had to share today. Thank you! To everyone who suggested different tests to try, this was more fun than I expected. Leave a like and a comment if you thought of any fun projects to do with Diecast. And subscribe for more scrap metal guides coming real soon. Leave it better than you found it. Keep doing the thing.